Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. The poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. A Beverly Hillbilly. Strangers in a strange land. Well, Y'all stop worrying. You're traveling with an educated man. But you only graduated the sixth grade. Well, you can't fall 12 years of schooling. <laughs> Did you learn anything about England? Are you kidding? I studied two years of English. Can you can find our castle? Of course I can, your royal majesty. Don't call me that. But, sire. Shh. I told you I don't want to put on no airs. Okay, then I'll just call you sire. Everything all right here? Finest frogs here, ma'am. <laughs> he just talks country like that when he's around you peasants. Actually, that there is his royal highness, the Earl of Clapham. Oh, and the two ladies? The young one with the yellow hair, that's my royal cousin. And the little one with the big mouth, that's the royal grand. <laughs> I'm his majesty's head barlet, Sir Jethro de Bodine, not at the round table. He's heading for our castle. I see. <laughs> you want to sit down and talk? Well, these two seats, it was being held for Mr. Drysdale, the Royal Oak, and his secretary. But he said they don't allow oaks on this flight. But I reckon you know that. Oh, no, it comes as a complete surprise. <laughs> He's flying over later, as quick as he gets his oak suit broke in. Steve, I brought your clothes. Well, where are you? <laughs> Anybody with you? <laughs> no, I'm quite alone. <laughs> if you weren't a traitor, you'd be wearing this. If you weren't chicken, you'd be on that plane. Like this? Well, at least the Clampets wouldn't be alone with Sir Jethro as their leader. Oh, they're all right. I've got a friend at the airline keeping track of them. Besides, the flight they're taking lands only once in San Francisco. Then none stop to London. So what can happen? Hello? Oh, Jim! <laughs> How's my royal family doing? Hey, what? <laughs> no. Well, find them. Gee, what happened? They left the plane in San Francisco. They think it's London. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is the Dandy Hill, driver. Okay, everybody, poke your heads up. <laughs> now, as we look out over the famous old city of London, the first thing we notice is a famous old English channel, right down yonder. <laughs> and going across it there, the famous old London Bridge. <laughs> oh, and off to the left there, we see the famous old White Cliffs of Dover. And yonder, straight across the channel, you can see the coast of France. <laughs> What's that little place down there in the water? Huh? Oh, <laughs> that there is one of them British Isles. <laughs> Excuse me, buddy. Just where do you think you are? Ain't this London? No, this is San Francisco. What you've been pointing to is Alcatraz, El Cerrito, and San Leandro. How do you like that? We done overshot England and landed in Spain. <laughs> Welcome back. Oh, thank you, ma'am. I'm uh, sorry you had to wait for us. Oh, well, we're glad to do it. Where were you? The Royal Nut there was showing us the White Cliffs of Oakland. Good ride, the boy. Well, he thinks he's so all fired smart. Yeah, and he didn't know London from San Francisco. <laughs> well, it just so happens they both look a heap alike from the air. They both got seven hills. I believe that's Rome. Huh? Where? I always wanted to see the pyramids. My mistake. Look, it's almost dinner time. How about some food? 
Well, help yourself, honey. We got a whole basket full there. Yeah, you brought along everything from sapsucker giblets to potchup shank. <laughs> well, you see, we didn't know you were going to bring all this food, so we have complete dinners ready to be served. They're included in the fair. Hear that, young ones? We're going to have a fair. <laughs> a pizza picnic? You're going to have side shows and freaks? If you ain't, you can borrow ours. <laughs> Wait till we go to London. You're going to be flogged through the fleet. Sit down, Brittany. Excuse me. Why don't you get up and help the young lady? <laughs> Just a minute, ma'am. I'll help you. Oh, thank you, but I have help. Well, it ain't that, ma'am. You see, I'm the royal taster. The royal taster? Yes, ma'am. Uh, you can't give His Highness and them no vittles without I taste them first. <laughs> Very well, Sir Jethro. <laughs> Ed, when do you reckon that fair's gonna commence? I'm getting hungry. Me too, Paul. What could be taking them so long? We got Jethro healthy. You just answered your own question. Now, be patient. There's a heap of work to setting up a fair. You gotta have sawdust to spread around. Jethro's got a whole head full. Get off the boy's back. This royalty business has got him stirred up, but he means well. Excuse me, do you still have that basket of food? Sure do, honey. You need it? I think we might. The royal taster has just gone through 12 steak dinners. <laughs> the royal buzzard! The beast of Bug Castle! The creature that's going to eat England! Get out of there, you six and a half foot! sure about it this time? Absolutely. Well, it's been nice meeting you. Hey, come on out to the castle sometime and see me when I'm wearing my armor. Oh, thank you. Hey, have you ever been a damsel in distress? Yes, for about 6,000 miles. I beg your pardon. Are you by any chance, Mr. Clampett? Yes, sir. Jed Clampett. Mr. Drysdale telephoned and asked me to meet you. I'm Cedric Giles Evans of the firm of solicitors representing the estate of your distant cousin. The late Marcus. Well, I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. Evans. This here is Granny and my daughter, Ellie. Allie. Allie. That is? He says that uh, my cousin Marcus is late. Um, he's deceased. Oh, well, he's in luck, because Granny's a doctor. What kind of disease has he got? Oh, well, I'll have to figure that out, Ellie Bay, when I examine him. Thank goodness I brought my medical supplies with me. Uh, is cousin Marcus up at the castle? Well, yes, but you see, he's been laid to rest. Good, good. Just keep him warm. Is the family doctor with him? Madam, the gentleman is dead. Oh. Well, us doctors is only mortal. <laughs> get, move. get a move on. We got sick kin folks up there at the castle without a doctor. Now, don't you worry. Granny has pulled folks through everything from thrush to dropsy. <laughs> Cousin Marcus has dropsy. He better be turned over every now and then. You know, madam, I rather imagine he's turning over at this very moment. <laughs> Come on, Jethro. Should we call us a taxi cab? Oh, no, I've got a car waiting. But first of all, you'll have to go through our British customs. Well, we do our best if you show us. Yes. Yes, of course. refuse to open your luggage.
state here, you have nothing to declare. Well, I've changed my mind. I declare that you are the nosiest bunch I've ever seen. <laughs> That's why we're here. This is British customs. Well, this was foolish enough. But poking through folks' belongings, you ought to be ashamed. <laughs> Mr. Clamp didn't object to opening his bag. He ain't carrying what I am. Oh, that's something to hide. You betcha. I'm afraid you leave us no choice. Yeah, don't open that. I'm warning you. <laughs> now you better bitch a preacher. A preacher? We got to get married. You have done touched my untouchable. <laughs> it's the code of the hills. Don't be embarrassed. I assure you there's no article of women's apparel that we... Oh, what do we hear? Yeah. That's my nightgown. Ain't nothing sacred to you, you wicked man. What's this? That's my doctor's bag. You're a doctor? Been one for 60 years. Got a patient waiting for me right now. Jim, cousin Marcus, he's laying up there at the castle with a bad case of bronchitis. Be careful, there's my medical supplies. What's this? That's a buckeye. And that's snake fork. Dog bane, horse mint, skunk oil, wahoo, muckbrush, gypsum weed, spider web, cat hair, everything a doctor needs. You are an MD. That's right, mountain doctor. <laughs> and, uh, what might this be? That might be buttermilk, but I wouldn't like no match to see. <laughs> <laughs> Come now, what is this? That's Tennessee tranquilizer. One of my best homemade cures. What does it cure? What do you got? <laughs> Madam, I'm afraid my government would not approve of this homemade cure. I ain't too happy about it, neither. <laughs> I mean to say, I cannot permit you to bring it into the country. You should have emptied this jug before you boarded the plane. If I'd have emptied that jug, I wouldn't have needed no plane. <laughs> See that these uh, medical supplies are impounded? Yes, sir. Now, wait a minute. I need them things. Annie? You still in here? Oh, come in, Mr. Clampett. This is our chief customs inspector. Howdy. How do you do? I'm Chumley. No, he ain't dead. He's mean. <laughs> Cousin Marcus is laying a desk door, and he's fixing to pound my jug and stuff. I wouldn't pound that jug if I was you. We could all be laying a desk door. That stuff will blow stumps. <laughs> we only plan holding these supplies pending inspection. Don't believe him, Jed. He's a man of low morals. <laughs> it's true, Jed. He's a regular rip. Why, he flung open my bag, followed my flimsies, and then wouldn't call a preacher. <laughs> the cold of the hills don't hold here. It holds in the four corners of the earth. I say throw down on him with your shotgun. No, well, that ain't a way to commence a visit. Well, at least whoop him and get my medicine back. Granny, I hear tell that London is a right good-sized town. We ought to have at least one drugstore. There we are. Sorry for the delay. No harm done. No harm done. If Cousin Marcus dies, he's to blame. And if that happens, you're gonna catch it, you fresh young whippersnapper. Young whippersnapper. Madam, I'm a sexagenarian. No, madam, this is where my office is located. It's most urgent that I confer with my colleagues immediately. Oh, you want us to come along? No, 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 I, I want to warn them. Uh, that is to brief them. <laughs> Bradshaw will show you London. I'll uh, see you later. <laughs> Let's go see the Queen. Yeah, take us to the Tower of London. <laughs> I think I'm walking to the drugstore. Now, Granny, Mr. Evans said to forget you're a doctor while you're here. Never. This town needs every doctor it can get. What would folks driving on the wrong side of the street? <laughs> Jed, I have swore an oath to heal the sick and ease the suffering of mankind. And I aim to take medicine to that castle. I can't go on foot. Then I'll ride a bobby. What's a bobby? I don't know. But I heard tell that they'll help you get wherever you want to go. Hey, 
Oh, boy, this is embarrassing to a sophisticated head barlet like me. Driver, follow them two ignorant hay shakers. Hey, your microphone's heating up. Are you sure this is where you buy medicine? Positive, sir. How long you aim to be here, Granny? Oh, quite a spell, Ellie. I have to start from scratch. Everything from Larkspur to leeches. <laughs> Let's go sightsee and pick her up later. No, I don't want to leave her alone again, Jethro. You and Ellie run on ahead and say your howdy to the Queen. Let's go. <laughs> Mr. Giles Evans asked me to give you this English money. Well, that's real nice of him. That's 25 pounds, sir. What's that, Jim? Well, it's supposed to be 25 pounds of English money. But whoever weighed it must have had his thumb on the scale. Hey, madam. Good day, sir. Can I be of any assistance? Well, uh, yes, sir. I believe so. Uh, thank you. Uh, the doctor here is wanting to stock up on medicine. You're a doctor? I am. You a druggist? Definitely. Well, here you are. Just fill it up with the standard items. The standard items? That's right. Buckeye, snake port, dog bane, horse mint, spider web, eye of a newt. You're one of those, Doc. Well, now, let me see if I can remember the formula from Macbeth. Eye of newt and toe of frog. Wool of bat and tongue of dog, adder's fork. Now there's a druggist. <laughs> I do rather pride myself on my Shakespeare. I never tried that. But if you recommend it, I'll take some. <laughs> take some Shakespeare? How do you sell it over here? By the bag or, or by the bottle? Well, I should say that we sell Shakespeare by, uh, by the volume, by the play, by the sonnet. Oh. Well, Give me half a sonnet. <laughs> I don't want him to think I don't know my business. You're holding your own just fine, Granny. <laughs> if I could write the beauty of your eyes and in fresh numbers number all your graces, the age to come would say the poet lies. Such heavenly touches ne'er touch earthly faces. What do you make of that, Jim? She kind of took a shine to you. Let's get back to my Shakespeare. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. <laughs> Just can't get his mind on business. I told you, Granny, that rascal's took the. Glad you're with me, Jed. He's kind of bold. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll take a whole sonnet of that Shakespeare. <laughs> May I suggest some Venus and Adonis? If it's good stuff. <laughs> Touch but my lips with those fair lips of thine. Though mine be not so fair, yet are they red. This shall be thine own, as well as mine. Why don't you take a walk, Jim? What about your duty to Marcus? Who? Cousin Marcus, laying sick in the castle. Your patient. Patience I can get, Jim. But at my age, suitors are kind of scared. I'd best stay. Doggies, if I don't think we've got to hold another one of them sexagenarians. <laughs> Are you sure this is where the Queen lives? Quite sure, sir. This is Buckingham Palace. Hand me the bucket, Ellie. What's she fixing to do with that water? I'm fixing to make my fortune, that's what. Well, I don't 
Oh, you're liking as the bottle. And I mean, she never read no history. This is how Sir Walter Raleigh become famous. Well, what you mean? Well, one day, Queen Elizabeth comes sashaying out of the palace. They was this here puddle. Well, quick as a wink, Sir Walt took off his coat and laid it on the puddle for the queen to walk over. Well, she was so tickled, she hauled off and gave him Virginia. Virginia, hey. Thank goodness there's one intelligent member of this here family. <laughs> Excuse me, would you please tell Queen Elizabeth that Sir Jethro de Bodine is waiting at the puddle? <laughs> What light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already pale and sick with grief, that thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Be not her maid, for she is envious. Her vestal livery is but sick and green, and none but fools do well. Cast him off. She knew she What's the matter with Granny? She done fell under the smell of a drugstore cowboy. Drive us to the castle and don't spare the horses. We gotta get there fast. You can mail us the Shakespeare. Bring it yourself, honey. <laughs> Time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a film life presentation. Viacom. <laughs>